everyone. So welcome. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Nikki Scott from UK Hyperpressives. And this evening's um, Zoom call, we have uh, Caroline Smith-McLean joining us. And um, Caroline's going to do a brief introduction. I've been doing these um, Zoom calls once a month for my groups. Um, last month, we did a Hyperpressives and Women's Health. And this month, it's all about um, how the relationship, how the, oh, I knew I'd get this bit wrong. I did it perfectly. <laughs> I was, how the, the most important relationship is the one with yourself. So um, Caroline's going to come in and explain a little bit more. And if you have any questions, guys, you can uh, type them in the chat box it, as you go along. I appreciate that you didn't really know much about the subject, so you probably haven't pre-sent questions in for Caroline. We've got some here that we prepared earlier. Um, and um, hopefully, if you've got anything that you want to ask Caroline, you can pop it in the chat box, or we'll have a little bit of time at the end where you can ask her some questions. So I'm going to hand you over now to Caroline. Welcome. It's really great to have you here. And, Thanks, uh, Nikki. Do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? Yes. So as Nikki said, I'm Caroline Smith-McLean. I'm a hypnotherapist and mindset coach. Um, I am certified in timeline therapy, NLP, and I'm just going through the certification for breathwork as well. Um, but a little bit about me and my story. So let me first start out by telling you how I actually got into hypnotherapy. So it must have been about 2011. Me and my parents owned a cafe and the cafe, I used to drive there every day feeling really nauseous. I'd be a bit like this um, and I'd get there and I'd just get on with the day and serve the customers. And I didn't really ever realize that I was suffering with anxiety. I just kind of got on with it had some really weird phobias. So I used to work mainly in the kitchen. And even if my dad came in and would be holding a knife in the kitchen, a sharp knife, I would have a panic attack. Now, again, really weird, but I still, yeah. Which bit, sorry? Got to the bit, I think, where you said your dad would come in with a knife into the kitchen and you'd get really anxious and have a panic attack, so. Yes, yeah, so. I carried on going, carried on pushing through things. Um, and then we actually gave up the cafe and I found myself at home. I had two young boys, no cafe to go to every day. And I had a full blown mental breakdown. So I actually, I would see my kids falling out the windows. I would see really awful things happening. It was a horrible, horrible time. I didn't want to change their nappies. I didn't want to cook their food. I would just be in a ball on the floor crying. Um, and then as time went on, I tried various therapies. So I tried traditional counselling. I tried CBT. None of them really seemed to work for me because I couldn't actually verbalise why I was feeling this way. Um, and then one day I found hypnotherapy and that was where things really started to change. It was like a weight was lifted. I really started to process stuff, but, but without actually having to verbalise it. And that was kind of the start of my journey. And I carried on working in other jobs after that, um, feeling pretty much like a lot better, still not quite there. And then one day I decided that I wanted to work around my kids. I found out my youngest had autism and I wanted to work around them. So I retrained in hypnotherapy and the actual training part going through all of the hypnotherapy was huge as well. I had so many moments of realizations of how I've been suffering with anxiety and things for years at that point I was actually with the, my boy's dad um, we'd been together for a very long time and in all honesty looking back now I was not treated well in that relationship um, and like I say looking back now I can't blame him even fully for the way I was treated in that relationship because I didn't expect anything more my self-worth was absolutely on the floor um, so however he was treating me I was still just staying around <laughs> so I was willing to put up with it you know I'd, I'd got over the anxiety but I still hadn't really focused or even realized that I had self-worth and focused on that so gradually I did start to think oh I'm starting to feel a bit better I'm starting to feel a bit better about myself I'm not being treated right so eventually I did leave that relationship um, and I won't say, you know, it was really easy. He was quite difficult when I decided to leave. 
Um, and we had been separated then for a little while when I met somebody else. And he came in treating me exactly as I wanted to be treated. He was so loving, so sweet, so kind. I was like, yeah, I've won the jackpot. This is amazing. And I couldn't accept it. I still hadn't done enough on self-worth. So even though he was telling me, verbalizing all these, these things that he thought about me, the way he felt about me, my brain's going, no, he doesn't. He's going to leave me. That's it. He's not going to want to be with me in a few months. When he realizes who I really am, he's not going to want to be with me. And this is the thing, you know, looking back now, again, I'd done a little bit, you know, people talk about having a glow up and they have a glow up and they start putting on a bit of fake tan. They get their hair done nice, maybe lose a bit of weight, whatever makes them feel good on the outside. But on the inside, you know, my self-talk was still absolutely shocking. I, I was... I quite often say to my customers now, you can get out of a toxic relationship with somebody else, but when you stay in a toxic relationship with yourself, you're still going to keep spinning around in those same cycles, either attracting somebody else that doesn't treat you right or finding somebody that treats you right and sabotaging it, which is essentially what happened for me. Um, and I would still attract people in that just yeah, didn't treat me how I wanted to be treated. And there was this massive like disconnect because logically I knew exactly how I wanted to be treated in a relationship. And, you know, I could write a list of how I wanted to be treated in a relationship, but unconsciously something just wasn't connecting. I just couldn't accept it. I didn't feel deserving enough of it. So actually I always say that my mental breakdown was the best thing that ever happened to me because that you know, spurred me on to actually overcome the anxiety been suffering with for years. But also these relationships, like they just taught me so much, um, especially that relationship where I, my self-worth was, you know, I couldn't accept the love that he was showing me. Um, and we actually ended up separating because I just sabotaged it. No matter what he did, my insecurities were so high. You know, he could be sat with his leg on my lap, his hand on my leg, sorry. And he'd take his hand off and my brain would be like, oh, he doesn't want to be with me. He's just here because he has to be. He doesn't want to be with me. And so we actually ended up breaking up. And um, when we broke up, it was this real realization that I'd basically caused it unconsciously. I'd sabotaged that relationship. Um, and I actually did a hell of a lot of self-worth at that point. And we got together about six months after that. We got back together um, because he'd just seen this massive change in me. We are not together now because actually I'd done so much work on myself. I realized that he wasn't the one for me anyway. Um, but it just goes to show all of these things. And I quite often say to people that how we do one thing is how we do everything. So if we're not feeling good enough about ourselves, if we don't have that relationship with ourselves, when I look back at how I was treated by managers in jobs, you know, co-workers in jobs, I was always given the really crappy jobs and just expected to get on with it. And again, I never spoke up for myself or if I did, there'd be a little bit of confrontation and then that would be it. I'd back back down. I wouldn't really feel deserving or worthy enough to be treated well in, in, in jobs or relationships. Mm -hmm. The same when it comes to money. I mean, I know as so being self-employed, actually, if you don't feel deserving and worthy, it affects every aspect of your life, including money, including, you know, when customers come to work with us, if somebody said to me, uh, I don't know, six years ago, are you a good hypnotherapist? I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm quite good. Now I'd be like, yeah, I'm absolutely amazing. If you want this help, I can help you get there. So it just goes to show how our relationship with ourselves really does affect absolutely everything in our lives. And what I really didn't realize is how we do unconsciously communicate with each other. And if you think about before we could verbalize things. So when we were cavemen and cave women, we would have been absolutely only communicating through unconscious communication. And so it's a bit like if you were to walk into a room and people had just had a massive argument in that room, even if the argument had completely stopped a few minutes before you go in, you walk in and there's that atmosphere, isn't there? 
And that's because they are unconsciously communicating and you can feel it. You can sense that unconscious communication and you can pick up on it. So people don't realize that they are always unconsciously communicating with the people around them. And just an example, an amazing example of this is I actually had a customer come to me about six months ago and the very first session, she was like, I'm getting a divorce. I'm like, okay, no worries. Like, you know, whatever people say to me is exactly what I go with. I never try and do anything different to what they want. They want what they want. So we go through a couple of sessions and she's like, I've started to really notice my husband's behaving very differently towards me. And I was like, okay, yeah. (laughs) Anyway, six sessions in and she's like, I'm happier than I've ever been in my relationship. I don't know what's happened, what you've done. And I'm like, I haven't done anything. (laughs) We have just really worked on, you know, you fully loving and accepting yourself. And looking at what your beliefs are about yourself and seeing the world through different glasses. You know, we quite often say, don't we, you put on rose tinted glasses. Well, actually, we're constantly wearing glasses depending on our perception. So especially when we're feeling in this place of not feeling good enough, absolutely everything is going to give us evidence of that. We've got something called confirmation bias and that basically means that we will see evidence of what we believe so you know if you feel like I'm really stupid you'll go through the day and you will find evidence after evidence after evidence that you're stupid because your brain will literally block out everything else you'll have those glasses on that are only looking for evidence that you're stupid and that's exactly what we'll get So when this relationship with ourself isn't very good, then we're going to keep finding evidence to prove to us I'm not good enough, I'm stupid, I'm ugly. Whatever it is that we believe, we are going to see evidence of those things. Yeah, absolutely. Do you find that it's almost like having two versions of yourself? The way way you were kind of talking was almost like there was this, the real you. Mm Mm-hmm. There was this other person that that didn't believe what that the real you could be like that. Yeah, I mean, definitely years ago. So I could be confident. I could walk into a room and I could give off confidence. But there's a massive difference as well between faking confidence and that inner talk. So I'd walk into a room, lipstick on, high heels, strutting in, looking confident. But my brain would be like, oh my God, they're looking at me because, you know, I don't know, they they think I'm fat. Whatever it was, what was going on on the outside wasn't what was going on in the inside. Whereas now doing the work I've done and learning how this works, I've, I've made sure that what's going on in the inside is the same as how I'm showing up. So I would have said that I would have used to have had almost two versions of me, but now it's very much one version of me. But do you do you feel that the the more confident one, the one with the lipstick, the high heels, has just quietened down the other one? Does that because that's kind of like how I would describe it? Yeah, I mean maybe I I feel like they've just merged. They've just become <laughs> like one rather than you know. And and again, I think so when I was like, oh, I've got to show up confident, it was almost like this external validation that I needed as well. So external validation from men. So actually there was a running joke when I was in school that I couldn't, like high school, that I couldn't say no to boys that wanted to like date me or whatever, regardless of what they looked like, what they were like. I mean, I I would have had some limits, but probably not many. And that was all because I was craving this external validation. And I mean, going a little bit deeper into that. So triggers is something that I quite often talk to my customers about. You know, we all talk now about, oh, I was so triggered by this. And actually those triggers. So, for example, when I was with uh, that guy who would have his hand on his leg and he'd remove his hand, I'd be triggered feeling like he was going to leave. And it felt like that was what was happening in that moment actually my brain again completely unaware to me completely unconsciously was going back to a time when as a child I perceived abandonment so 
when I was younger, my mum, who has come on amazingly, like we've got a great relationship now, but we've had a few rocky patches. But when I was a kid, she would say things to me like, oh, one day you're going to come home and find me gone because she was struggling with mental health. And that was her way of trying to get through those times. As a child, I just thought, oh, my God, I'm not good enough for my mum to stick around for. And again, that's the pattern that keeps on going. So when this guy is moving his hand off my leg, although I feel triggered in that moment, it's like I've already got a wound there. He's just opening it up. Yeah, so you're almost trying to prove to yourself that I won't abandon you, but maybe they will. Yeah. Yeah, always in the back of my mind, always on that red alert that they're going to leave me. And especially that that level of self-worth, the two together just made everything completely rocky and my nervous system was shot. <laughs> you know, I couldn't, I would cry all the time over the tiniest little things. I couldn't have any confrontation with people because it was too much, too overwhelming. And this is something that a lot of my customers now come to me and they're like, oh, whenever my partner says anything, like it's just, it either erupts or we just avoid it. Yeah. So um, you were kind of talking about like other, your relationships and and like how, and, and actually what stood out to me was the, the customer, you were saying that she came in and said that she was going to get divorced. And then through the sessions, everything kind of changed. And that's kind of something that I talk about, which is that what you give out reflects back to you. Yeah. So I think that, you know, that, 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 that really resonated with me and that, you know, if, if there's insecurity, if there's not, not self-worth, if there's like feelings of anxiety or, you know, whatever it is that's triggering the person, that's going to also be reflected out to the, the closest people around you. Absolutely. It was like, you know, we talk about these glasses. It was like all of a sudden she was trying on different pairs of glasses, seeing a different perception of her relationship. I mean, some of the things she said to me, she was like, I've just discovered that he's interested in this. I've never known that he was interested in this. They'd been married for like 23 years. This wasn't a new relationship. <laughs> but, you know, when we've got that confirmation bias, it is literally like anything that doesn't match our beliefs we we block out we cannot even see it hear it because and what a lot of people don't realize is we have millions of things going on around us at any one time so our brain if it was to focus on all of those things it would explode it would be so overwhelmed so the reticular activating system has to filter that down and then we see things based on what our beliefs are amazing so um are you mainly using hypnotherapy when you're using when you're working with people so timeline therapy is something that is just absolutely incredible because that is because I have no idea I'm sure everyone else doesn't yeah so with timeline therapy a bit like I was saying so if you imagine your brain is when we're being triggered, when we are feeling certain emotions, we feel like they're happening in the moment, but actually we're going back to the very, very first time that that thing happened. And all of these things are stored in the unconscious part of the brain, which again, most people just don't realize that 95% of everything we do is unconscious. <laughs> so say that thing actually happened when you were four, the first time you felt like you experienced abandonment, for example, was when you were four. Now, when I say felt like you experienced it, this doesn't mean that somebody actually left you. It could even be, I've worked with people who, um, one person I worked with was literally dropped off at a nursery one day and her parents played hide and seek. And when she came out, because she didn't want to go to the nursery, her parents played hide and seek, thinking that they'd make it easier for her. Well, she came out, she's with all these strangers and her parents are gone. Mm. That for a child, you know, as an adult, we know, well, I wasn't abandoned. My parents did me, they came to me. Primitive in the child part of your brain just goes, oh my God, abandoned. Yeah. And stores that pattern so say that happened when you were four and then since then there's been more and more triggers happen rather than trying to remove something that's happened now something that happened last week 
that happened last month. We just, this, and everything else away. We, we just, so, sorry, we're just getting a little bit glitchy. I don't know where, what's changed. Oh. Just losing your signal just ever so slightly. We'll carry on, it's fine. Yeah, can you still hear me okay? I hear you. Um, good. Yeah. So like I say, we removed the very, very first time, the memory of the very first time that that thing happened. And it's absolutely incredible. I literally check with people to see whether they can still feel that emotion. Um, and I've worked with people who have had trauma, like quite severe trauma in their life using timeline therapy. We have removed specific events that have happened. And again, it doesn't mean that they can't think about those events at all. They can, but just without that emotional trigger. Um, and yeah, even, you know, all of these things that I practice, I've been through the process of actually experiencing them as well, because I could never do something that I don't 150% believe in. So yeah, timeline therapy is just, like I say, it's incredible. It's it's kind of like shining a magnifying glass on your life and the bits that you want to pick out and swap for something else. So again, is that just to have a bit of clarity, is that through hypnosis? Timeline therapy isn't through hypnosis as such. It is working with the unconscious, um, but in a slightly different way to hypnosis. So, I, so I've had some therapy. So yeah. um, that's what I was kind of trying to understand. And, and we did parts therapy is that similar yes so I do also do parts integration as well that's um not being hypnotized everyone that's just like well because I know that some people are a bit um they, they're a bit unsure about hypnotherapy yeah um I actually quite liked the parts because I was awake when I was doing it and that kind of was even more profound because like you say you're working with the subconscious yeah and this is the thing with people that kind of want the more logical side of things and they want to know more of the science if you think about it this way our unconscious likes to keep us safe okay so if it has any of these patterns that makes it feel as though it's unsafe it's constantly going to be it goes back to that blueprint okay so your original blueprint when you experience something it goes back to that again and again and again which is why and and quite often it's really useful to look at people around you um unfortunately a lot of people that have had abusive childhoods then go on to get into abusive relationships they leave an abusive relationship and get into another abusive relationship again consciously that's not something they want to do they're not consciously choosing to do it but unconsciously it's like this blueprint is stored and so that's what they want to do and with the parts integration, so our unconscious part of the brain always wants wholeness and resolution. So whilst there's ever two parts of us, so this is anything where you'd go, well, part of me feels like this <laughs> and part of me feels like that. Your, your unconscious is split. Which way do I go? So it's unsettled during those parts. Whereas during parts integration, we work out what the learning is what why your brain is struggling to choose between those parts they've always got the same outcome that it wants and we decide what that is using the unconscious and then we bring it all together because your unconscious part of the brain it always wants wholeness it always wants resolution and until we get that it's striving and using loads of energy to try and get that it's amazing that's a really good um explanation I mean I, I'm a real fan of hypnotherapy I've um I've had I've used hypnotherapy to help me with various different situations like anxiety and um mm -hmm. and you know when I was going through my divorce etc I found it really really useful so yeah, yeah. and yeah. even with hypnotherapy there's so many different types of hypnotherapy I mean especially a lot of men that I get coming to work with me the first thing they'll say to me is oh you're not going to make turn me into a chicken are you no, I've got no interest. Kind of stage hypnotherapy, I think that people think about, you know, like the shows and the things that they've been to see that. Um... Yeah, I mean, I'd be getting my kids to clean if I was doing stage <laughs> hypnotherapy. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so shall we go through some of the questions that we prepared? Yes, of course. Yeah, unless anybody else has got any questions, I'm more than happy. If anybody here would like to ask a question, you can just type it in the chat box. Um, I can't see anything in the chat box at the moment, but if, if anyone's got anything that they're interested in or don't understand or would like a bit better explanation, then just type away. And if not, we'll carry on with, with um, talking through some of the questions that we, we prepared earlier. So one of the questions was, how does our relationship with ourselves affect our relationships with others? I think you kind of covered a little bit of this, but just- Yeah. I mean, I quite often say to people that, I mean, especially romantic relationships, they are like a mirror to us, okay? And if we can see them as a mirror to us, this can actually be really beneficial, really helpful. Because when we're being triggered, rather than going, you did this, <laughs> we can say, okay, what's going on within me? Okay, so I've been triggered because they've done X, Y, and Z, but how has this made me feel? Well, it's made me feel as though they're going to leave me. Okay, so actually this is showing me exactly what's going on in me. And now I know that all I need to focus on is that I can be safe and secure in this relationship. So it's about kind of turning things in. And again, I'm not saying, you know, if it was in a really abusive relationship or anything like that, I'm not saying put up with it because, you know, it's something that's going on within you. Um, but especially if we're repeating these relationships. So I quite often say to people, you're attracting the same person with a different face. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that before with various people around me where that's happened. Um, they've yeah. moved from one person to the next, hoping that it will be a better outcome, but it isn't because the, the personality of that person is just the same. Yeah, and it, it, like I say, it's when we recognize that there's something within us that's attracting that type of person. I mean, I'm sure for anybody with kids knows the days where I am stressed and I've got loads going on are gonna be the days where my kids pick at me. They need more than ever on those days. And again, so my kids are a mirror to me. Relationships are a mirror to me. And it is is very much about rather than constantly putting the blame outside of ourselves and saying, well, they did that just just looking within it's like self-awareness but also knowing what to do with that self-awareness and I think triggers can actually be huge for growing and understanding what's going on within us as long as you're able to kind of step back and ask yourself yes why why did that set me off why has that happened yeah um so what can be the impact of having a poor relationship with yourself well I think we've covered lots of this, but like I say, rubbish relationships, toxic relationships, allowing people and not necessarily even romantic relationships, but you know, people pleasing. Um, I've worked with lots of people and they've got, I don't know, even a friend and they're like, every time they ask me to do this, I'm there. And I don't really have time to do that. And I'm like, okay, so why aren't you saying no? Well, because if I say no, they'll be really upset with me. So when we when we don't feel good enough about ourselves, we're not really standing in our power, then it can be anybody that, you know, I always say you will, if, if you don't set boundaries, how can we expect other people to stick to them? Um, yeah, that, that's a big one for me because being a people pleaser myself, um, it's it, in the last few months it's been something I've really been working on with um actually saying no I need to put myself first actually yeah and this is the thing okay, and then I can be okay for you yeah I mean filling up your own cup you know people talk about that but also if we're saying yes to somebody when we want to say no we're essentially telling ourselves that they are more important than us absolutely yeah, that's a good point. But so yeah, like so many um, people, especially women, struggle to pri prioritize their relationship with themselves. I think this is partly due to society. Obviously, the women were traditionally the ones to stay at home, to raise the children, to look after the house. And as we've evolved, <laughs> women are now, you know, 
I work for myself I've got two boys I know you work for yourself and sometimes there is still this expectation that you're going to continue to juggle all of the things that we used to be able to do but without everything else so I do think there's this level of guilt that comes in when we prioritize ourselves um and again just going back to that people pleasing being the the role model for families being the one that looks after everybody so actually feeling no to people feels really uncomfortable or prioritizing ourselves and our needs feels really uncomfortable but again from my from having that mental breakdown I have realized that exactly like when you're on an airplane and they say to you if anything happens you put your own oxygen mask on first that's because if you don't right and you collapse who's going to help your kids when I had that mental breakdown there was nobody there to to do the things that my kids needed for them it was on me and so actually I always say I need to put myself before my kids everybody says oh my kids come way before me well they shouldn't yeah okay so um what can someone expect when they start improving that relationship with themselves I think you have covered some of this but but just give us some of your success stories uh well like I say that that customer that went from wanting a divorce to being married she's my favorite success story um but I have had lots of people that have had improved relationships and again this is improved relationships all around sometimes is with parents um I actually take people through a process where they can see different perceptions um it, it's again an, using the unconscious part of the brain um but it helps them to see a different side of things so quite often they might have a parent who they've been totally unable to forgive because of something that's happened as a child um and when we do this particular exercise they're suddenly able to see things from their parents point of view and see that you know nobody inherently wants to hurt somebody else we are all protecting ourselves and sometimes that looks like people do really shitty things unfortunately but on the whole people don't want to hurt other people they want to protect themselves they want to stop themselves from being hurt so when we heal this relationship with ourselves when we start to feel better again that mirror that you see starts to to shift and change and I'll be completely honest sometimes this looks like things almost get worse before they get better because we have to stand in that power and when we start putting boundaries um sometimes people don't like it for a little bit (laughs) I know it really does make you look at what relationships you have got with people around you doesn't it yeah and again you know people worry about put and and I was somebody so so let's take my mum for example I would put these boundaries in place and it would be very uncomfortable for me and very uncomfortable for her but actually in the long run I've done her a favor because I was doing a lot of the stuff which she was avoiding doing once I put those boundaries in place she had no choice but to start doing the things that she was avoiding doing and actually she's learned a lot she now feels better about herself for being able to do those things so when we put those boundaries in place rather than looking at it as oh my gosh they're not going to like this it's going to be awful actually quite often you are actually helping that person by putting those boundaries in place as well so when you've got unresolved past traumas, how, how can you heal from those without reliving them? Because I know there's a lot of a lot of people that won't want to go through, you know, what's that they recognize that there's issues, but they don't want to kind of go through and relive the trauma, but they they still want to heal from them. Yes. And that is where I would say to find a therapist that does something like timeline therapy, hypnotherapy. Um, because we can absolutely process these things but without reliving them Um, so I like I say I have taken people back to very traumatic situations but without them actually becoming emotionally connected to that traumatic situation Um, and I've got a very particular way of doing that so that they don't become emotionally connected to it 
um because unfortunately again when we when we're talking about things and if you are talking to somebody about traumas and things unfortunately you are reliving it again and again and again and I mean we do naturally have certain ways of processing these things so sleep REM sleep is one of our ways where we do process events and memories that have happened um but unfortunately it's a bit of a catch-22 because a lot of people who have had trauma or high stress all of these things they don't sleep well because their brain is trying to over process those things yeah so you had um you said to me earlier that we were going to go through an experience yeah about which might be quite nice for everyone yes we've, we've kind of finished all of our questions and i don't think let me just check the chat no, we don't have any questions in the chat at the moment. So, um, so yeah, would you like to explain? Yeah. What so I'm going to take you through a bit of a guided visualization. We're going to do something called anchoring. And anchoring is something that we very naturally do all the time. So just as an example, if you were to go to a set of traffic lights, what does green mean? Okay. And what does red mean? Yeah. So your brain has been anchored to know what those certain things mean. And anchoring is a tool. So I'm going to teach you this today, but this is something that you can do again and again and again by yourself um, to bring up certain feelings. So things like love, for example, we associate people with love. But unfortunately, I can't say, right, Nikki, here, have have some love. I can't hand it to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We actually create those feelings and then we anchor those feelings to people, to circumstances, all of these things. Nobody gives them to us and nobody can take them away. So when we can learn how to anchor these feelings, we can use them again and again and again. And the more we practice them, the more they become who we naturally are. So it's like anything. It's like any other habit. You know, if you stop doing something, you start doing something when you've done it a certain number of times, that just becomes who you are. And we want our identity to be the version of us that does feel good enough to feel confident, whatever it is that we want to experience. So I'm just going to ask everybody to close their eyes if they can. And just take a nice deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. And just take a moment to get yourself settled. In through your nose. Long, slow breath out through your mouth. Just enjoying this moment. And just see if you can taste your breath. Make it taste delicious. Feel it moving all the way up your nose until it turns down, goes down into your chest. Taking it all the way down to your stomach if you can. And when you're ready, I'd like you to see if you can remember a time when you felt totally loved. A time when you felt so totally loved. And when you find that time, just Step right down into your body, right down into that moment and see what you could see through your eyes. Hear what you could hear through your ears and feel that feeling of being so totally loved. So totally loved. And just make that feeling as strong as possible, that time when you felt so totally loved. And you may even like to hug yourself if that feels good whilst you think about it. And whilst you've got that feeling and you're making it even stronger now, that feeling of being so totally loved, I'd like you just to pinch your earlobe. Just really pinching that earlobe and feeling that feeling of being so totally loved, so totally loved. Just feel that warmth of being so totally loved. And as soon as you begin to feel that feeling fading, you can just let go of your earlobe. And now I'd like you to find another time when you felt so totally loved. And this doesn't have to be with a particular person. It could even be with a pet. 
and just find that time. Take yourself right back to that time and step right down into your body. See what you can see through your eyes, hear what you can hear through your ears and feel that feeling of being so totally loved. That warmth being so totally loved. And when is that its strongest? Just pinch your earlobe again. Just really enjoying those feelings of being so totally loved. Oh, it feels so good to feel so totally loved. And whenever you begin to feel those feelings fading, just release your earlobe. And now I'd like you to think of another time when you felt so confident, totally confident, totally confident. And just take yourself back to that time now. Step right down into your body. See what you can see through your eyes. Hear what you can hear through your ears and really feel those feelings of being so totally confident. So totally confident. And now find your other earlobe. And I'd like you, when that feeling is at its most powerful, just pinch your other earlobe, feeling so totally confident and just feel that feeling spreading throughout your entire body now feeling so totally confident and when you begin to feel it fading just release and now I'd like you to find one more time when you felt so totally confident take yourself back to that time when you felt so totally confident and when you find that time step right down into your body see what you can see through your eyes hear what you can hear through your ears and feel that feeling of being so totally confident and when is that its strongest just really pinch that other earlobe just really pinch it anchor that feeling in making that feeling so strong and so powerful being so totally confident Whenever you begin to feel it fading, just release. And whenever you're ready, just taking a nice deep breath in, coming back to the room. And now I'd like you just to test, just check, see if those anchors are there. See if you can pinch that earlobe and really feel into that feeling of being totally loved. I can see a smile on your face, Nikki. <laughs> Okay, and release that one. And then using the other earlobe to feel into feeling so totally confident. And can you feel them? Yeah. And so what we can do is we can really amp that up <clears throat> the more you practice it. So you could do that three, four times with each one. I mean, if you run out, obviously, once you run out of earlobes, you can use knuckles, you can pinch your fingers together, you can imagine colors. So whatever it is that you want to imagine, but you see how you create those feelings. And so this is really powerful. If ever you're going on a date, or you've got a specific job to do, so you want to feel into being confident, or you're going to sleep, and you want to go to sleep feeling loved, you get to choose to create these feelings absolutely you get to choose I love that that's the thing is that most people go about their day only being like five out of ten when actually they could wake up and be ten out of ten I do not get out of bed until I feel exactly how I want to feel get out of bed and feel great I just yeah. I, but it, it is stuff you need to work on yourself you have to actually yeah, and I always describe it, you know, you imagine a little wilting flower, like you say, if you're constantly being, somebody says something, and somebody does something, and you're being blown around, <laughs> actually, you can choose to be that strong, secure flower. <laughs> it's an absolute choice every single day to just make it a 10 out of 10. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Love it. That's so good. I like. I like that. I'm. I love. I love hypnotherapy. Anyway, I, I really like connected with it when I used it. So, um, yeah, it's it's cool. So, um, if people want to find out a bit more, you know, what what sort of things have you got to offer? For us? So, I have actually got a free healthy love blueprint masterclass coming up on the first of October, um, and I'm so excited because. I'm going to be giving a lot of value. <laughs> so the first day is all about how we attract these unconscious relationships. So we will actually be going through the kind of process. Day two, I'm actually offering a hypnosis to really feel into your power. 
um, and to see how that level of self-worth can really affect us in relationships. And day three, I'm doing a really powerful breakthrough breathwork session, which just shows us all of the unconscious beliefs that are still playing out and going on. And it really brings them up to be processed and kind of go through that. So that'd be the three days I'm offering. And that starts on the 1st of October. Yes. And so that's... Sorry online is it it is all online on zoom so the details for that are on my website which is literally just my name and hypnotherapy so www.carolinesmithmclleanhypnotherapy.com i can pop it across to you later if that's okay nikki to put it in all my groups and share That'd it be amazing I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this recording out in the newsletter that i put so i can put the details of um what you've got to offer because that sounds yeah really good yeah how long are the sessions that you're doing on the so it will really depend on interaction from people but it probably be between 45 minutes and an hour each session so and then if anybody um wants to do to speak to me one-to-one there's no obligation to work with me if anybody wants to message me and ask me any questions I am more than happy to answer questions I've got a free hypnotherapy recording that I can send out if people want to listen to that at night time. And I put loads of content on my Facebook page, which again is just Caroline Smith McLean Hypnotherapy. Um, Lots of stuff about healing, lots of stuff about relationships, about self-love, all of the things that we've discussed today. So if anybody wants to follow me there, please feel free. That's fantastic. So that that's really generous, that three day thing. So hopefully you'll get lots of people signing up for that. Um, I've already had a few, well, about 12, which is great, considering I've hardly started advertising it yet. Get, get, all, your, get all the details over to me and I'll get it out to everybody as well, because I'm sure you'll do more after this evening. Um, Rowan says, sounds amazing. Thank you. So um, oh, I hope to have you there, Rowan, because even if people don't have difficult romantic relationships, is still a really great process if you've got any kind of level of self-worth that you want to work on it's still going to be really really impactful for those people I think generally as women we could all do the work yeah and actually one of the things I wrote on my notes is that inner work isn't about changing ourselves okay a lot of people think oh, well, I need to be this version of myself. I need to be this version of myself. Actually, inner work is about really accepting and loving every part of you, even the parts that you think you don't like at the moment. And it's about shining, isn't it? Shining a light on those bits because, you know, we're all unique. That's what's so amazing is we're all unique and there's not another Nikki Scott out there, not not one so amazing as me, and there's not another... (laughs) Caroline out there not one as amazing as you do you know what I mean that's what's so brilliant about it all so it's about doing the work to accept that really and I think we could all do with a little bit of help absolutely so on that note if no one's got any more questions that has been absolutely fantastic I just wanted to say thank you for sharing that thank you for taking your time to join us this evening oh thanks for having me Nikki forward to getting all the bits and details from you so that I can send that out and Hopefully you'll get some people joining you on at the beginning of October. Lovely. So thank you so much, Caroline. Thank you everyone else for joining me today. Um, I will be back next month. I'll be putting the date out for you. It will be the first Thursday evening of October because it's nearly October. That's feeling not like summer at all. <laughs> I'm still clinging on to that last hope. Mm-hmm. Um, and that will be just a general um, women's health and hyperpressives q a with me um so i look forward to seeing all of you then thank you very much and good night